Union Square in New York was the backdrop for these scenes of red violence. From their ranks will come the saboteurs, spies, and subversives, should World War III be forced upon America. At the height of the anti-communist hysteria, the real danger to America came not from the Reds, but from the so-called Red Baiters. Even if there were only one communist in the State Department, even if there were only one communist in the State Department, that would still be one communist too many. Of all the demagogues who exploited the Red Scare for political gain, no one matched the senator from Wisconsin, whose namesake, McCarthyism, would come to define the entire era of political persecution. Senator Joseph McCarthy emerged from virtual obscurity in 1950 when he claimed he had a list of 205 communists working in the State Department. The claim was patently untrue, but it launched McCarthy on a political juggernaut. For four years, the senator ran roughshod over civil liberties, while the news media served as a conduit for his reckless, unsubstantiated charges. He had been a member of the party that he had recommended. Uh, McCarthy's audacity knew no bounds. He accused Secretary of State George Marshall, the architect of the Marshall Plan, of infamy so black as to dwarf any previous venture in the history of man. He threatened President Truman and suggested the Democratic Party was a bedfellow of international communism. The hysteria of McCarthyism seeped into every aspect of American life. People rushed to condemn friends, neighbors, and co-workers. Many were fired or shunned for perceived left leanings. Though McCarthy wore a cloak of patriotism, his abusive actions had a chilling effect on democracy. He was told, You have created an atmosphere so vile that people have lost confidence in their government. But slowly, the tide began to turn. The centers spoke out. McCarthy to wear a new case of known red in army. The respected journalist Edward R. Murrow attacked McCarthy's repugnant tactics on his investigative TV series, See It Now. One month ago tonight, we presented a report on Senator Joseph R. McCarthy. We labeled it as controversial. McCarthy remained characteristically defiant. If I am giving comfort to our enemies, I ought not to be in the Senate. If, on the other hand, Mr. Murrow is giving comfort to our enemies, he ought not to be brought into the homes of millions of Americans by the Columbia Broadcasting System. With his support withering, McCarthy pitted himself against the U.S. Army in an investigation of charges and countercharges concerning clout, favoritism, and communist cover-ups. Unless we make sure that there is no infiltration of our government, then just as certain as you sit there, you will see a red world. The ensuing Army McCarthy hearings tore away the senator's mask of self-righteousness and struck a fatal blow to his crusade. Until this moment, Senator, I think I never really gauged your cruelty or your recklessness. The hearings were a media circus and, in the end, inconclusive. But for the tens of millions of viewers who tuned in to watch, McCarthy was revealed to be an arrogant, blustering tyrant. The American people have had a look at you for six weeks. You're not fooling anyone either. The American public had seen enough. Nearly overnight, McCarthy's immense national popularity evaporated. President Eisenhower probably spoke for millions of Americans when he said, It's no longer McCarthyism. It's McCarthyism. Three years later, Joseph McCarthy died, probably of complications from alcoholism. He was 48 years old. McCarthy faded, but an unsettling question remained. Could America win the Cold War without sacrificing the very liberties it was fighting to safeguard? Ominously, a highly classified government report concluded, it is now clear we are facing an implacable enemy 
whose avowed objective is world domination. There are no rules in such a game. Hitherto acceptable norms of human conduct do not apply. A new and frightening day was dawning, one in which legal and moral restraints were set aside in a high-stakes game of diplomatic maneuvering, clandestine operations, and nuclear brinksmanship.